Today on the show, we took a look at The Lord of the Rings, The Return of the Kings, The Lord of the Rings, War of the Rings, In Television Lives, and in Versus, it's NBA Live 2004 against ESPN NBA Basketball. talk about today is Lord of the Rings Return of the King. This one's from Electronic Arts and we looked at it on the PlayStation 2 but it's also available for the Xbox, GameCube and PC. No one I repeat, no one who plays video games is going to want to miss out on this spectacular and amazing video game experience. I would second that and I would say that this is the finest movie game translation I've ever seen. This game really captures the spirit, the essence, the look, the feel of the film and brings you into that world, allows you to play all of the characters from the movie and it's just absolutely breathtaking. I mean, this is what happens when the movie makers like Peter Jackson, the yes. set designers and the lighting people get involved. And the actors. And the actors. Yes get involved with the creation of the video game. The graphics are so good in the stonework and the castles and the forests and the caves. But not only are the graphics amazing, it's really brought to life by the incredible audio in the game. Uh. Music from Howard Shore. Return to your master, creatures of shadow. The motion capture on the characters is fantastic, especially the enemies. I love the orcs that jump from tops of stairs to come and battle you. You have a, a bunch of different sword swipes and you've also got a kick move and you've got projectile thing, which with Gandalf you have like a magic spell or with the other guys you might have arrow. a bow and arrow. You get graded on how well you perform those moves. Against every single enemy you fight. Right, and then you can upgrade your characters as you work your way through the adventure. Now the other thing they added this year as well is the whole multiplayer and co-op right. aspect, which right. is great. You can play online on the PS2. But you can also play two players at the same time, and it's not split screen or anything like that. I did have a problem with the gameplay. Loved seeing all the background animation and all the stuff going on back there, all these guys battling. I wanted to, as a game player, to be able to enter into that world a little bit more. You pretty much can, though. There's invisible walls and barriers that sort of keep you there. They're not invisible walls. When, when you're on the you top of a castle, no, you don't want to fall off. It's it. barely linear. You also don't have any control of the camera. The camera's also 100% controlled by the computer. It's really not that type of game. As in the movie, there's right. all these like kind of sub-stories going along all at once. So is the game as well. So if you could take Gandalf's path, or sometimes you might take Sam and Frodo's path, that's the cool thing about this. And along the way, as you're finishing these areas, they also give you video game only interviews with the cast and the creators. Well, Elijah's a pretty good gamer. I'm definitely a better gamer than the two. Yes! I've only been seriously gaming now for probably three or four years. And he's doing very well, uh, but I'm still a much more experienced gamer. But I'm getting there. I can beat Elijah in a few games now. I am certainly a lot better than Don. Ah! I will say this. The one bad thing about the game was it came out like about a month before the movie release. Right. So I was afraid to play it all the way through because I hadn't read the third book. I wanted to wait to see the third movie. So I started seeing stuff I'm like, no, no. So, so yeah. I gotta warn you, if you haven't seen the third movie, you might want to see the movie first right. and then play this game because you'll enjoy it even that much. It's the perfect complement to the movie, which is awesome. 9.5 out of 10. I'm giving it a perfect score, a 10. On the positive side, this is the most amazing movie to video game translation we have ever seen. The stunning visuals and amazing audio are absolutely top notch. And finally, there's tons of video game exclusive extras for all you Lord of the Rings freaks out there. On the negative side, although Tommy didn't really mind too much, I did find the invisible barriers a little bit restrictive, and I wish that I had some control over the camera. All right, we're going to stick with Lord of the Rings, but we're going to move from the movie license 
to the book license. This is Lord of the Rings, War of the Ring. It's from Liquid Entertainment and Vivendi Universal for the PC. What'd you think of this one? Now, what I find is my biggest problem with this game is it is a real-time strategy game. Yes, it is. And as well, I'll probably know by now that you know I'm not too fond of that genre, but it really doesn't add anything at all to all of the RTSs out there. It did feel to me like we were playing a Lord of the Rings expansion skin for Warcraft 3. Right. I mean, it felt like they just had taken... Which is fine. And Warcraft 3 is an excellent game, yeah. so if you're going to pull from a source out there, you might as well pull from one of the best. When I think of Lord of the Rings. Yes. I think of the EA and the movie Absolutely. and the dark thing. These graphics seemed a little almost on the cartoony yeah. side. Even still, though, there are some really nice graphical touches in the game. Sure. I love the water effects. They look really nice. I also like the way that they tell the story, and I think that Lord of the Rings fans are really going to appreciate the adherence to the books and all of the backstory elements that they draw from to build this game. My favorite single player mission is actually when they give you 35 minutes and you have to defend Helm's Deep, That's cool. and they only give you small amounts of, of characters to do this. This gets like really hectic. You're like, oh my god, oh, you know, you're trying to figure it all out. You do have resource management. You have to collect wood and you have to collect ore and you have to build Collecting units. Wood. That's what I paid 50 bucks for a game Well, that's, for. That's, part, yeah. that's part of the genre. I'm getting wood. And you go up a, uh, a, a technology tree. Getting wood. That's good, man. You go up your technology tree and you try to build up your units and then they create new things and new technologies and, and so on. All that stuff is pretty straightforward. But the thing about this game, it's all with little 3D characters, so you don't have tons of units on the map like you would in like an Age of Empires type game. Another good thing about the pace of the game is that it really comes to life in the skirmish mode where you can sort of set your parameters and, and you go up against the AI, or when you play in multiplayer. I, I like the catapult mode, which was really fun, where everybody races for this giant catapult, and if they have control of that, they can rain flaming boulders down on their enemies, which is really fun. It's not as flashy, and it's not as slick as, as the EA movie-based stuff, but it's still fun, 7.5 out of 10. I'm giving it a 6.5. On the positive side, the game features very cool story elements that are lifted right from the books. The single-player campaigns are really fun, the pace is great, and the game really shines in skirmish and multiplayer mode. On the negative side, with the Lord of the Rings movie out there, it's really hard to get those images burned out of your mind. And although it's a well put together game, it just doesn't offer a whole lot of new and fresh, exciting technology. And finally, if you're like me and don't really like this type of game, I got three letters for you. R-T-S. All right, stick around. We're going to be right back with a look at television. They don't look very happy. You're back in the castle!